Hello and welcome everyone to this very special edition of Fueling Around with me, Jason Plato, and my co-pilot and navigator, the one and only Mr. Dave Vitti. Hello! Fueling Around is powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest precious insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help you save your money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Dave, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. It's a little bit nippy, isn't it? Because we're outside here at the Pit Stop Cafe at Silverstone for this special episode, but I'm excited because we have some all-star guests about to join us. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the, uh, the this special live direct from Silverstone, special edition of Fueling Around, live from the Pit Stop Cafe at Silverstone. We've got the one and only, we call him Mr. Side Parting, Dan Robottom. <laughs> and we've got two others, we're gonna leave the best till last. <laughs> We've obviously got Mr. Paul O'Neill <laughs> and the absolutely delicious grid walkabout beauty fountain of not knowledge that is Louise Goodman. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. This is exciting to have us all here together in front of this live audience. Um, I think I should start with you, Daniel. In terms of today and in terms of racing generally, and this is a question that is often asked of touring car drivers, uh, what's it like racing with someone who's probably older than your dad? Uh, <laughs> he's not quiet, but he's not far off, he's, is he? I tell you what, he's seriously not far off, is he? He's my favourite player in Toka too. <laughs> That's how old he is. Do you not find though, but when you're racing, and this is a serious question, when you're racing and when you look in your mirror, does the sight of that grey hair not just, like oh, any motorist, does on, it not man. kind come of disturb on. you? It's, oh, it's just like Jesus coming through the river. <laughs> you know? It's, uh, it's a special sight. Jesus coming through the river. Yeah. I mean, you've had worse reviews, haven't you? Yeah, uh, yeah I've had much worse reviews than that, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, Louise, lovely yes. Louise Goodman, thank you so much for joining us. How do you, and you must be asked this a lot of times, how do you keep them all in check? Because it always feels to me like being a school teacher, you have to keep all of these little boys in check and look after them because they do mess around, do they not? Did you see those slightly scared looks that I got from Dan and Paul then? Jason's <laughs> too old, he doesn't care, nobody yeah. keeps Jason in check. But I think you summed it up, school teacher. Yeah. I'm tall and I'm bossy, yeah. and I can do scary face really easily, can't I, Paul? <laughs> yep. Do you find that, um, you know, do things carry over from the track beyond that? So, for example, obviously with racing, there's always going to be situations, and can you leave it when you get into the, back into the pits, or does a bit of needle always carry on? And that's, I mean, you've all been there. Lou, you must see it all the time. Paul, you've been there. I mean, is that, is that true? Can you get rid of it? I don't know. I've carried grudges, and I don't even race anymore. I just don't. I just don't speak about them on the telly. Um, no, it, it's a di it's a difficult one. No, it really is, isn't it? You know, as drivers, you you know you you're going hard at it, and you don't want to you don't want to give an inch because you know you know that it's going to be a, a bad thing for you. Um, but you know what? Life's too short, and and that's probably why I stopped racing actually because I just hate conflict. <laughs> I think it depends on the drivers. It's down to a character thing, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, some drivers, it's part... Of, well, let's face it, you and Matt, you know, it was part of the story from a journalistic perspective. That was part of the story, and it was... But you need heroes and you need villains when yeah. you're building up a championship, but it's just about keeping the rivalry in, in check. But when you've got different types of personalities, yeah. some people let it wash over them, and some people... Uh, you know, in life, never let anything go and carry a grudge with them, don't they? So, Joe, you know, and the amusing th thing was, you know, going back to talk about me and Matt, it, you know, what we, we'd be hauled into the bus and been torn strips off. Said, look, can you come, just calm it down, you two? And then we come out, and, the, and Louise and the press would go, great, can we have some more? Yes. Yeah. So there's that conflict. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we did play up to it a little bit, I think, but by and large, it, it was genuine. It's competition. It's you know, it's it's serious. In many ways, it was, it was the best thing that could have happened, wasn't it? Because as you say, you know, that kind of rivalry and conflict and intrigue, and it gets people watching, and it publicises the sport, and it, it brings you know bums on seats and eyeballs on the telly. I think people forget as well. You know, I had people coming up to me saying that Jason and Matt Neal thing that is so staged, and I went. I can tell you a few things about that situation that is definitely not staged. <laughs> Absolutely. It was staged. Yeah, wow. people thought it was staged. Like I said, I've been round Jason's house and this has happened, and I've been round Matt's house and that's happened. So I, I know it's not staged. Yeah. And actually, I've never told you this. What I mean, happened round his house then? Uh, 
<laughs> was he up to no good? Yeah, we had a, we had like a proper like we had an effigy of you and burnt it. Oh, no I'm joking, we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't give me a toe at Silverstone or something, so I just joined his ranks. <laughs> no, no, but there was a funny one, and, and Louise will know about this because we were at Rockingham 2011. I was in the Chev your championship yeah. winning Chevrolet Cruise, and I'd had a, not a great year at all. And Jason had really helped me out in, at Rockingham, and we ended up, uh, I was on pole, I think, with three minutes to go. You had a massive falling out with Matt, yeah. and the, 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 you were firing into oh, the yeah. Civic, the Civic was firing. It was you a £5,000 falling out, that was. Massive. Yeah, but it's a lot. That, that was a fine. There was a lot going on, and, and I remember, I was driving my car, and they were on the radio going, Jason's picture, but your P2, you're on the front row. I was like, oh, amazing. Mm. And uh, they said the TV will come and do an interview with it. Just come into the box. As I was coming into the box, I was like, this is it. You know, the sponsors, they want this cut coverage. And then all of a sudden, I just seen them all running off. And you trying to fire into that lanky streak of piss. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it's me, me dad. It's me <laughs> yeah. dad. It was yeah. the control your man, Barry. <laughs> or something like that. What's he doing, Barry? <laughs> it's amazing. It's my new favourite, Tim. I never liked you, to be fair, JP, but yeah. your dad's sound. Uh, Dan, growing up and obviously watching the sport, who were your heroes or heroines, obviously, other than Louise Goodman? Well, Louise, is, she's, yeah, she's been the apple of my eye for a very, sure. very many years now. Um, do you know what? I, I grew up watching the very late end of the Super Touring era. I think the whole, you know, you can't really pick a favourite era because it's all so different, you know. Like, our current era is really close, and this year's even... It's just it's tough now, isn't it? Just because there's so so small gaps. But then you look you look back through the years, and there were some great names, wasn't there? Like Cleland, JP, yeah. Menu, him. I have to be polite, you know. <laughs> him, this one. It, it's just it, I don't think Matt. Obviously, Matt. You know, Matt did the thing with the Independence win, which was amazing. Yeah. You know, and it's just I think just so many great memories of touring car, and I think it just it's so emotive for so many people. Because, you know, you used to be able to buy a Cavalier and you saw one on the TV on a Sunday, didn't you? You know, they were pretty similar. So, you know, it's evolved into... It's probably the, re the realest working man's motorsport that we have, I think. And to pick, pick up what Lou said, I think one of the other reasons why it's so pop popular is, is the access. Yeah. Do you know, what, what are the sports you know which is as big as this, where you can go and speak to the players... Yeah. Uh, bef you know, the moments before they go and do their thing. Yeah. And actually moments after they do the thing you can't do that in in f1 you can't do that in gts it, you know and that's part, that's i think one of the reasons why this works i think the word's relatable isn't it you know and i think that's applicable with a lot of sport these days is that you know you can't relate to the people involved certainly in the things like football you know you can't relate to those people and i think you you're right in the same way and and the nice thing is because it does come over as being very relaxed and quite a family environment and you know all the characters is that you do feel like you know they're not that far removed from from yourselves i mean for me personally the reason i've always liked touring cars is because they look like cars at the risk of saying something stupid formula one has never really done it for me but i've always liked like touring cars because you've got that proper competition they do look like proper cars and it feels like proper racing to me well that's, that's what i was going to say it's proper racing yeah. as well because Formula One is the pinnacle of the sport. It's an engineering yeah. driven sport, whereas touring cars, it's about entertainment. Yeah. So we get, I am regularly, I'll be sitting in my little um, office in one of the garages to own. I'm regularly jumping up and down and shouting at the television because it's exciting. And I know people who, who you know, have got turned on to touring cars recently, they'll come up to me, people I know in Formula One, and say, Oh my God, I watched some tour. It's really exciting, yeah. isn't it? Because you kind of live for those exciting races in Formula One, and we get, you know, three a race weekend, or well, at least two a race weekend. But I think it says a lot when the ITV main channel pick it up yeah, um, for us, because it's not it's not a situation where they've been force-fed it. Yeah. ITV main channel have, have said, oh, we'll take that. And then after one round, they've gone, we'll take another few as well. So it just shows you where it's going. It, it is a, it's a proper sport, and you can see by people turning up just to listen to I've us. I've just read on my little notes here, 10 years since you were in a car. Nearly 10, ten is that right? It, I think well, it, this is my 10th year of, of, not uh, been, it? of ITV, yeah, is it? which is crazy. And like literally, for me, doing what I do now, um, you know, I've got to thank people like Louise who helped me through because you know I was just brought in as a stopgap because there was so much time yeah. to fill between the races. And, you know, and Louise and, and Steve... Um, and Tim, in the uh, in the ten years or whatever since you've been racing, uh, Paul, what have you noticed like these days? What's the main difference now as opposed to when you were last driving in terms of the sport? What's changed? Uh, it looks harder. 
I'm being dead honest. Um, I think it was very nice. In, in what way? Why? Uh, it just looks a lot more competitive. When I did it, um, it was more spread out. Uh, I was always with uh, good teams. Not often did I have a bad car. Um, I don't think there's that many bad cars out there now. I just think it's that close that the championship, for me as an onlooker, can be swayed um, you know, by other means. Um, so I'm not saying it's corrupt, but I'm saying it can be you know, made into a spectacle amazingly um, you know, by uh, the balance of performance, we'd call it now. So it is... It, it, Nicely it, well. played. I like <laughs> it. I like but, it. you know, I still love it. I'm a fan. Um, do I miss it? A lot of people ask me that. Don't miss it at all. Do you not? Not at all? No, nope, not is at all. Right? Is that right? Do you, know, do you know why I don't miss it? Stress. Because I'll speak with... And I hope Dan doesn't mind me saying this. No. I, I speak to people like Dan and I see and I hear how difficult it is to um, get a race weekend put together. And I know JP, you've been in it a long time and you gentlemen particularly are very good businessmen um, and racing drivers. Tom Ingram is another one for me who's an amazing businessman and that. I just don't have the fight and the, the, the days in the week for it to become a 24 seven thing for me. I love turning up, I love working with Lou, I love being a broadcaster. Mm. I get excited in commentary because I know what it's like for the young kids, especially in the United Juniors, to race a car and not think any about anything else. And that's that's what mm. I love. And mm. I don't miss the racing. I mean, I, I don't mind club racing, but at this level, no thank you. So when you say that, are you talking about the, the graft in terms of the responsibility that each driver has got to get their next deal, to get their backing? Are you, is, is this what you're talking about? Yeah, I yeah. was only, do you know, Dave, I was only just thinking, I was in the back of the ITV um, truck before, just talking to a few of my colleagues, and I was, I, I was thinking how, um, is, it, uh, is it autonomal? What? Uh, autonomous. Yeah, yeah, no, not, no, when, it's, <laughs> when the leaves are falling on the oh, ground. Oh, that's What's autumnal. That? <laughs> That's that one. Not when you car drive yourself. <laughs> um, I was only thinking... Or though, terminal. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Or terminal. I was only thinking, it's, it's when I need to wear a jacket outside that I used to have massive anxiety about the next deal. Is that right? The that next a, year. That was a trigger point. And it was the always jacket, here. Winter jacket. Second, second or third round of, from the end yeah, of the year, yeah, yeah. I'd put my jacket on and I'm like, Oof. am I going to be racing next here year? Mm. Where am I going to get that £200,000 from? Am I good enough to do it? Am I good enough to get sponsors? And that's why I, I jumped and I wasn't pushed and ITV found a gap for me to do something. It was the best thing I ever did, but I have zero regrets. I've won two touring car races. They were two of the best days of my whole life and I never take anything back from that. Interesting. Well, that pit, the picture of the first one is an amazing picture, yeah. isn't it? Very it's good. cool. Well, the video, it? in fact. Yeah, I'm dead fortunate. Kissing yeah. the floor, crying, all that I sort know. of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, you can imagine at a home round, you'd never thought you'd win a race. You'd never thought you'd race a car. You never thought you'd race against Jason Plato. Mm. These people, it, it was a dream come true. And as much as a joke about things, I've had a very privileged life, mm. mate. Um, Louise, we, we were talking before about, obviously, you being uh, the, the <laughs> school headmistress and looking after all the, the naughty boys, uh, obviously having Jade Edwards in the mix, that must be refreshing for you to obviously, you know, have a female driver in, in the championship. Mm. And I suppose, how do we encourage more women into the sport, would you suggest? Oh, don't, she's a disaster. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I love Jade. That was a joke. That was a joke. Look at that Poorly nervous time. look on his face. That was oh, a joke. God, I'm in trouble. I think, I think he's trouble. a brave man to have a pop up at <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, we all know Jade. Yeah. She's got yeah. a great right hook on it. Yeah, yeah, she's got a land right in the end. You're, you're worried you're about me. Oh, you wouldn't oh, want to take on Jade, would you? I wouldn't want to mud wrestle with Jade. I'd be though. right Definitely. behind her. I'd lose. Um, to answer your question, Dave, by getting more young, young girls in... Because it's like a pyramid, isn't it? If you think of all the young boys who start karting and how many get to the top, you've just got to get more seven, eight-year-old girls. Like it's a numbers game, isn't it? It's just a numbers game. That's all it is. It's all it is. Because it's not overly physical. Mm. It's, it's, not, it's not like you know the difference between a, a, a male golfer and a female go golfer or a male boxer and a female... It's not that at all. It's mostly in your head. Mm. So there is no reason why girls can't do it other than it's just the numbers. And people so don't... As I say, people don't think of, like, taking young girls. They, they think, oh, she want to go shopping, won't she? Well, you know, I maybe more I think of them will. I don't know, but I think there are lots that don't. I think that's changing. I think... Do you know what? I think Jade Edwards, <clears throat> from a personal... And she's a good friend of mine. Jade will leave a massive imprint. But 
with what she's doing at the minute in touring cars. What she did at Thruxton was absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, whether you're a boy or a girl, the way she drove was amazing. But she will leave a massive imprint for females in, in, in motorsport, in my opinion, in this championship for sure. Need to see it to be it, don't you? That's exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you need role models, don't you? If you're a young woman and you're looking and you don't see anybody like you in there, you know, it's very difficult to sort of imagine yourself in that world. But then you see Jane, you kind of go, well, you know, if she can do it, then why can't I do it? Or why can't my daughter do it? And, and to be honest, you know, having Jane or me being part, part of Jade's team, if you like, because I'm the new boy in the team, um, you know, we obviously, you know, the, everybody looks at each other's de data. There, there is nothing between pretty us, good Re to be really, you know, there's a bit of, exp obviously, Jade's lacking experience, but in terms of her ability to yeah. do the job in the car in specific corners, there's nothing there. Not I mean, there's no difference between all of us. But when you add it up and a bit of experience and knowing the tyres and all that sort of stuff, then there is. But her ability, it's not lacking at all. No. It isn't. Absolutely. Um, there are certain questions that we always do on Fueling Around that some of you may have heard, obviously, who've heard the episodes before. Uh, Jason, I think we should run through yeah. some of these with our, with yeah. our all-star panel. So, car history. First car. And, and give oh, us right, a story okay. no, of, quite uh, good of with cars. Sports. Um, I had a Ford Fiesta ZTEC S diesel, because I'm sensible. Barrel rolled that after six weeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> replaced it. <with laughs> so I then went back to Ford and I'm like, oh, I've got gap insurance, which is mega, because they actually give me more than the paper car. Perfect. So I ordered a Fiesta ST because it was quicker. Petrol made a better noise. But it didn't get delivered for six months. So do you remember Citroen ZXs? I do, yes. Tremendous vehicle. Yeah. <clears throat> I had one of those for a period of six months. Was, it, was that a GT? AX GT was no, a machine. No, it was a naturally aspirated diesel. What, what about your car history then, Lou? Come on, you, you must have had some crackers over the years. No, not really. Well, no, I my first one that I bought, I, used, I joked my mum's when, you know. What was that? It was the, it was the, the lovely oh, little oh, orange okay. the love, Golf. The love. Yep. Oh, oh not a Beetle, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then I got a Ford Fiesta. Wow. What but, trim? Uh, oh, oh, do you know what? It had lovely go faster stripes down the side, and that was about the only fast bit wow. about it. It broke nice. down within about a week of having it. Um, and then I just used to use one of my favourite cars, actually, one of my first jobs. I didn't have a car, but there was like a work car that was a little mini that they used to buzz around in London to the different jobs. But of course, they all had their own cars, so I used to nick it at weekends. That was really good fun. And it, when you were at Jordan, you must have had some se sexy cars. Yeah. You're joking. Well, Eddie I, I, Jordan EJ. spent money on a company car for somebody. <laughs> you are joking. EJ had this great thing about... Uh, well, for starters, he used to get... We were sponsored by Unipart, so he used to get free cars off Unipart. Well, he got free cars off anybody who could get free cars yeah. off, let's face it. But we got the ones that Unipart gave us. And Eddie would come up with lines like, Electric, you don't want electric windows <laughs> you don't want electric windows they break down the whole time you want the windy ones the, the, the windy oh, he Amazing. was just anything to avoid giving you you know to actually having to stick his hand in his pocket um, to be fair tony jardine wasn't much better because he was my boss before that i had this gorgeous um what was it ah uh, it was a fiat fiat punto but it was a real you know, go faster. I was away at a race. I came back and one of my colleagues, he was driving and he'd had a really lovely car. He was driving a Honda Civic. It was like, oh, mate, what happened? He went, oh, yeah, I didn't tell you. Tony's done a deal with Derek Warwick because right. Derek Warwick Honda was one of our clients. Yeah, he's got rid of my car. I've got a Honda Civic. I'm like, you must be gutted. He said, not as so much as you're going to be. Yours is red. It was like, what? <laughs> what? I hate red cars. And you've got rid of my Fiat Punto and given me this. You are joking. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Thinking it's bad to go from a Fiat into a Honda. I know, That's mate. That's pretty bad. But back in the days, eh? I was going to say, it's like your career, boys, and them <laughs> Hondas, isn't it? Um, I was, can I just say, I had some cool room. cars. I was going to yeah. say, you, you've I mean, had some belters, eh? Yeah, so I had that Fiesta when I first passed my test, but then I had a, um, I had a, a Citroen Saxo VTS with a Shogun bonnet vent that I put in myself. Nice. That I, then I had to get a new bonnet because that wrecked it. And then I got a Subaru Impreza 22B, really? which wow. I had it for six weeks, nearly had the crash of my life and sold it for five grand more. Uh, and then I had an Escort Cosworth and I sold that what, for two probably? grand more. A proper whale tail? Yep, whale Did tail, you? mate, yeah. Blue smoking, everything. Right snotter. Oh, Did you manage to hang on to that in witness? 
I know, mate, I know. <laughs> Fortunately, by then, I'd climbed up the social ladder via Mel C, and we had a driveway. Ah, uh, okay. Gated, electric, the lot. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no, that would have lasted about 10 minutes on the streets of Witness. Absolutely no chance around there, mate. We just drive around and escort popular pluses. Um, what's the biggest motoring mistake while we're with you then, Mr. O'Neill? I know it's a kind mistake. of broad question, but what's your biggest motoring mistake? Um, having an ABS fault with my Fiesta, on the, and I needed to go to work the next day in Warrington, and I took my sister's car without her knowing and crashed it into a lamppost. <laughs> uh, it was a Mercedes SLK. Absolute, and then Ron Dennis rang my house, my mum and dad's house, because it was because they launched the, um, what you call it, cars, the, the F1 car in 96 six or seven mm -hmm. and they all got a Spice Girls all got a car each all SLKs in different colours yeah. and uh, yeah he rang the house and was like tell me what happened because that's cost us a few quid no way that yeah wrong. yeah so that was nice and then um, yeah and some people I work with at McLaren now um, one of the main tech guys there uh, his name's Zag Italian lad he found out that my sister was, was Mel and he come up to me on a job about two years into a McLaren job and was like, I never thought it was you, but you caused us a lot of grief. And that <laughs> car was in, in at McLaren for ages and we had to do this and that. So that was a massive mistake. Front of the Daily Mirror, front of the oh, Daily Star. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Big red. Proper yeah. job. So love the fact I've like, tried as hard as I can in my career to make a name for myself. And the only thing I've got is like a <laughs> smashed up Merc on the front of the mirror. It's all right. <laughs> Um, Jason, we're, we're, we're very nearly out of time, scarily, but there is one question that we do ask to everybody, and I think it'll be interesting to get this from our three all-star panellists here. And it's about the fact that we always say that music and cars go very well together, we think. So we need your fantasy drive, please, from each of you. Where are you? Where are you going? What are you listening to? And most importantly, what are you driving? Mr. Paul O'Neill, you first. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I think I'll go with... McLaren 600 LT. Okay. I launched that a while back. Lovely car. Yeah. Really love it. Exhaust, glow in the dark and yeah. stuff. I'd be going to... And I love this drive. Every time it comes up, Knock Hill. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I would. And obviously, I'd take it around the track yeah, as well. No. I'd be listening to Underworld by Born Slippy because it always reminds me of Scotland and yeah. train spotting. So yeah. that would be me. Belter. Very nice. I like it. Lou, paint is an automotive picture of perfection, please. I'm in Italy. Okay. I'm doing the road from Faenza that goes up over the hills and then down into Florence. Absolutely stunning. I'm driving. Oh, what am I driving? Red Civic. Red <laughs> Civic. <laughs> it's not even red. It's not red. Yeah. The car, actually, I always really lusted after is a Gordon Keeble. Okay. So I'm driving a Gordon Keeble. As Jason's going, what, what the is hell a is a Gordon, Gordon Keeble? What, what is that? that? It's a, a, do you know Gordon Keeble? Yeah, Sounds like a euphemism. No. <laughs> it's a car. It's a really cool car. It's a British car. It's a post-war British little sports car. It was so over-engineered that they couldn't make any money out of it. Honestly, Google it. Google it. They only made about 99 of them back in the late 50s, 60s, and about 97 of them are still on the road. Is that right? It's a really cool little car. Dan yeah. Robottom yeah. drove one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm probably listening to the Rolling Stones. Okay. Yeah. Very you just good. Just fuck me. I was going to say the Rolling Stones. Um, so well, we can, you know, <laughs> we can do it together. All right. I would love. Um, uh, for me, cars peaked early mid 2000s. Big V12, NA, Ferrari Enzo for me. That's my hero car. Mm -hmm. Or an F40, I suppose. You could do it, but we'll, we'll kim it with an Enzo. Um, where would I drive it? Probably Highway 1 in California would be quite cool. And sort of start down in San Diego and end up in Monterey and do a lap of Laguna Sega to finish it off, whilst also listening to the Rolling Stones. You like that, don't you? I thought about that. Very, very yeah. nice. It's a better than lap of Knock Hill. <laughs> you have to deal with you'd have to deal with Gordon as well when you get there, wouldn't you? <laughs> I wasn't That's thinking depressing. about Gordon, I was thinking about Gillian. <laughs> the faces of the rest of us when you said not kill and we all went, What? <laughs> Are you I, sure? Sure. Place. I love yeah. Knock Hill, but yeah, I just think of that drive to Knock Hill as being... That's because like, you're a southerner? It's a oh, that's true. It's a bloody long way from where we live. Before we all fall out, I think, Jason, you need to wrap us up with this special episode of Fueling Around. Do you want to take us out? Well, firstly, uh, big thanks to our special guest, the one and only Mr Paul O'Neill. Round of applause, please. <laughs> Dan Rowbottom, Side Parting Weekly. And the delicious Louise Goodman. <laughs> 
Well, that's it uh, for this very special edition of Fueling Around, powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a coat to your exact needs, help you save money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Dave, as always, thank you. But a huge thanks to our special guests, Paul, Louise, and Dan. Absolutely lovely to have you here. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us on Twitter, at Jason Plato or at David Vitti. And if you've liked what you've heard, feel free to give us a five-star rating, press the follow button and share the podcast on all your socials. Once again, please show your appreciation for our guest today, Mr. Paul O'Neill, Louise Goodman and Daniel Rowbottom. Thank you so much for joining us for this special live episode of Fueling Around. So thanks for coming, guys and girls. Um, thanks a lot. Thanks.